Well, from 11th to 5th to number one, Canterbury's boys team tearing up the 1A pool. The Cavaliers' first test as top dog, Blackhawk. Braves looking for the upset of 5 at Oak Canterbury. That's Dan Klein on the left, Jay Sefton on the right. And we're going to get it started. Uh, Canterbury's Davis Rayo, he's plenty of time there for the three. He had time to cook his dinner. Students, they confirmed that it was a three-pointer, just in case you wondered. Trent Van Horn going to make a sh- try a shot here. It's a little short. Austin Hatch going to go in. He gets the, the pass, the hoop, and the foul, right? And then Hatch again, he's going to clean it up underneath. He finished with 18 points. Blackberry, or Blackberry, Blackhawk, Tim Howard, I don't know. <laughs> New team in the league. <laughs> Off the inbound, he's going to drive it in for two. Canterbury wins 62-46. Let's get out of that one. Let's go to the girls' game. <laughs> Canterbury unveiling their late latest state championship picture with uh, plenty of alumni on hand. That was Maddie Troxel on the fast break. She'd have six points. By the way, uh, Canterbury was up 20 at the half. Blackhawks' Allison Kaufman, she'd have a team-high 22. And then here's Kendall Fitcher. She's going to work it around underneath. Madison Moyle, she's going to hit the jumper there. That was good for 10. And then Bailey Farley, she's going to drive in. And Farley has been lights out this year. She'd have 27 points on the night. And then Fincher again there is going to bury a three. She'd have 23. Farley, again, going to drive it in. She is undaunted when going to the basket. Canterbury, number one, or number four. They are big-time winners tonight, 83-54. We were able to get up and down the floor pretty well in transition. Coach has been working with us a lot on um, conditioning, and we have a lot of good players who get up and down the floor and make some good passes. Our passing was really well tonight. By the way, Blackberry, nothing to do with Blackhawk. Both teams are off until after the new year. Well, in the NHC, there's no better way to open up the conference season than against your biggest rival. Both Carroll and Homestead looking to start off on the right foot. Chargers coming in 4-1. and one. The Spartans 3-3. Three and three. Pick this one up. Tyler Alt, he's dropping in three of his 19. And for Homestead, Adam Hackett off the miss. The putback and the foul. So Hackett got hacked. He got hacked, okay. but he made it. Austin Hilly driving for the floater for Carroll, and then Hilly hits the triple, 37-31. Carroll after three. The fans still in it, but then Homestead takes over in the fourth quarter. Siri hits the three. Evan Rhodes would add 14, and Nick Gamble hits a three in the final seconds as Homestead wins this one, 45-44. The final. What do you say we go to DeKalb County, Norwell? At DeKalb, Garrett on the attack. Butcher to Grant Baker for the three. First bucket of the game right there, but here comes DeKalb. Austin Addison Dobb, the bucket and the foul. He had 18. Jared Forrest for the Barons. Gets it to Dobb, hits another triple. Then it's Kyle Philman for Garrett. It's the nice baseline jump. Well, Josh Van Meter had 24 for Norwell as the Knights get the win, 54-47 the final. One final NHC stop, Belmont hosting New Haven and New Haven's. Tyler Clendenin going to spot it up, hits the bottom of the net there. And then here's Kyle Sovine, left-handed hook shot, and he's going to be fouled here. He gets hacked pretty good on the arm, but anytime you can hit a hook shot, that's good stuff. We'll put it in. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Caleb Heckley, no heckling for him. He's going to dial it up from long distance. And then Belmont's Kyle Lehrman, he's going to make a nice bounce pass inside to Matt Cronister, who's going to get the two there. And then New Haven's Justin Miller, he's going for the long one, which is worth three in this game. New Haven gets the win 62-40. to They improved to 4-2 and two overall. Let's go on the ACAC. Leo and Garrett, a battle of conference unbeatens. Andrew Such. Finds Luke Peppel for two of his 17 points on the night. Such, he's not going to give it up this time. Takes it all the way in for the easy layup. Leo in control on this one, but uh, Garrett still battling there in the Lions. Dead tied freaky to Eric Custer. Cuts into the lead just a little bit, but Ryan Bollier, 30 or 20 points on the night as Leo wins this one big, 85 57 to 5. Well, still to come in the Highlight Zone, we've got the Drive Alive Play of the Week. Plus, we head to the College Hardwood for a top 15 showdown at St. Francis. That's next after the break. How about an early Christmas present for the Drive Alive Play of the Week? Let's go back out to Concordia. Lures down one. Miracle Woods at the line. She hits the first. 
and she would hit the second as Lure stays undefeated with a 52-51 win over Concordia in a top five showdown. Extra Christmas presents for her. <laughs> All right, to basketball on the slate tomorrow, a good boys matchup, Bluffton at Snyder. And Canterbury over at Northrop, a couple of good girls games as well. Snyder's going to travel down to Wayne, and Homestead is at Carroll. What do you say we head to the men's college hoop now? Number five, St. Francis, hosting number 14, IU Southeast. Supposed to be played yesterday, but uh, IU Southeast couldn't make up hit for it. They probably wish they probably would have stayed away. Dejo Von Sawyer Davis was a one-man wrecking crew in this game. If it looks like he's scoring a lot, he did. Yeah, can you believe it? He scored 18 of the Cougars' first 23 points, ends up with 46 points, a new Hustle Center record, 11 boards to go with that as St. Francis gets the win, 73-69 the final. IU hosting SIU Edwardsville, and to say IU got off to a good start, uh, a bit of an understatement. They would outscore SIU Edwardsville 24 to nothing in this one. Christian Watford, 18 points. IU cruises to 8-2 and two with an 88-54 victory. You know, it's nice to see IU winning, but I'm a little concerned about the schedule a little bit. All right, it's Matt, a little harder now. Right? Matt Ant's on the road against Tulsa. They get the win 92-80. to 80. They outscored Tulsa 31-5 to 5 in the third quarter. They'll be at home Sunday, 5 o'clock tip-off at the Coliseum, hosting Erie. Comets. Oh, Comets, what are you doing to us? They continue to struggle. They lose their sixth straight to Quad City, 5-1 to one the final there. They will be home tomorrow to host the Dayton Gems. That's a 7.30 drop of the puck, and boy, the Comets have made a lot of changes, and they are searching not only for some wins, but an identity, a rough season. For it's Wayne still early, though. Right? Still early. And if you're interested in college basketball, we've got the South Carolina at Ohio State game. It'll air on our LWS station, which is normally what the Doppler runs on. Watch tomorrow. Good night.